World of Horror, also known by its Japanese title, Kyofu no Seka, is a role-playing video game with a one-bit pixel art style inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft and Junji Ito. The game was created by Polish developer Paweł Kozminski and published by Yesbred Games. The full game was released on October 19th, 2023 for Mac and Windows. The game set in the 80s in the fictitious town of Shiokawa, Japan, where players are tasked with solving otherworldly mysteries through exploration and combat to halt a looming apocalypse, facing off against a whole host of supernatural mundane threats heavily inspired by Japanese folklore. There's turn-based combat and unforgiving choices. Players can experiment with a deck of event cards to discover new forms of cosmic horror in every playthrough. Gameplay harkens back to early adventure games slash dungeon crawlers. In the main game, players are given five mysteries from a pool of 20 at random and tasked with progressing through them all before facing whichever elder god they're against head on. You can think of this as five different sub-stories or five different dungeons if we want to get sort of really meta, uh, but the idea is you have to get from start to end of each of these in sequence. This comes in the form of exploring the town of Shiokawa, dealing with random events, uh, balancing resources and of course the turn-based combat. We're queuing up attacks and actions and the different strategies may vary depending on what you've had access to on hand, what sort of enemy you're against, or if it's a fight you can't win and you just need to get out. The game's a bit of an endurance battle and it's easy to progress through one mystery, however you have to balance your resources for five of them and it takes a bit more finesse. To make things even more mischievous, every time you explore a location you draw from a randomised pool of event cards. These events might end you up in combat, getting some sort of bonus, or having to perform a skill check to either advance or be halted. There's also the Doom Tracker, and if this fills to 100% before you get to the end of the game, it's an instant loss. The Elder God summoned and you have some horrible fate. For those in the know, this game reminds me of the board game Arkham Horror, both featuring a Doom Clock, exploration, similar combat and Eldritch Abominations. The fun for me came from trying out new builds and unlocking new stuff, and we'll get into the advancement in this game a little bit later. There's a few different ways to play, but before we jump into the big shebang, I think if you want to just dip a toe, you need to play the spine-chilling story of School Scissors. It's the shortest mystery and it's the only one you can play, you know, just on its own out of the box. Uh, it comprises of five different scenes in a school and the setup is as follows. Another boy from your school has disappeared. Rumour has it a terrible woman has returned from the grave, a woman with the widest smile and the sharpest scissors. You knew your friend was up to something when he left you his notebook full of cryptic notes. I can send her back where she belongs, he claimed. After he disappeared too, you decided to study the notebook for clues. It details a ritual that can stop the wicked woman once and for all. What's the worst that can happen? Now you must explore the school to recover blessed chalk and holy candles to perform the ritual your friend was going to. Your options are quite limited when compared to the main game, and as such it serves as a bit of a tutorial in terms of both exploring an area and the turn-based combat. There's few variations on what you can find within the school, but after you find the relics, you have to use your friend's notebook to choose the correct sigils, perform the ritual correctly, and face off against the scissor woman. She's based off of the Japanese urban legend of Kuchisaki Onna, a woman who would ask potential victims if she was attractive. If you said no, she stabs you with her scissors. If you say yes, she gives you the same facial treatment she has with those scissors. In this case, if we perform the ritual correctly, it's an achievable boss fight. If we perform it wrong, whether intentionally or not, She's much harder, but can drop her scissors as a weapon. And if we lose, we get the lovely smile she's got. This mystery can crop up in the main game also, but it is its self-contained mode, so it will tell you if you like the game or not. I'd fully recommend giving it a go as your first experience. Moving forward, we could choose quick play, which will totally randomize our character, our background, our elder god, and our potential investigations. We'd progress through five of these mysteries back to back and then face off against the elder god. Or we could use the custom start feature to choose all of this ourselves. Now the game boasts 11 old gods, 14 playable characters, a handful of backgrounds and several challenge runs to complete. Not all of this content is accessible on a first boot and as you progress completing the game, you unlock more and more of it for subsequent runs. It's that sort of roguelike. 
I always found those games super satisfying, and this is no different. Each mystery can contain multiple endings, and there's even an alternate timeline mode that mixes up everything, including enemy placement and um, investigation design. So there's a whole heap of replayability. You could probably bash out a run in under 30 minutes. I think that's a very slow run as well. I've got 28 hours of playtime, and I've not unlocked everything yet. I think it's truly superb once you get into it. The biggest hurdle being the GUI and the graphics, uh, but please don't come at me with fitchforks. Just let me explain them a bit further. The graphics are basic but effective. You can clearly see the inspiration to Jinji Ito's work, not only with the various themes and settings, but with the art style specifically. It's a one-bit style, and the game is framed inside a retro monitor, and this works well for the 80s setting. There's a lot of interconnectedness, and the game has its own aesthetic, even if that was borrowed from other sources. It's again one of these games where you could take a screenshot at any point, and you'd know exactly what you were playing. The soundtrack is again following that retro style with some chiptune themes. They work well for framing the game and I've got no complaints here. The GUI however might be the biggest hurdle into getting new players into the game. I'm going to try and break it down here by highlighting the most important parts. So we could break it down into the following sections of the screen. The character bar, the map bar and combat. From there we can break it down even further. So the character bar is on the right side of the screen and that contains all of your stats, your inventory and your equipment going from the bottom to the top of the screen. Various buttons under your character will open up areas of more detail like your inventory, your spell list, any status effects you might have, etc. The most important stats are your stamina and resolve. Think of these like physical and mental health. If you reach zero in either of these, you lose. Stamina, you just die. Resolve, you go insane. When we look at the left side of the screen, the top side will contain the current part of the story or your opponent and their stats if you're in combat. The very top is your Doom Tracker, and if this reaches 100% you lose. Now this increases as you explore the game naturally, or when you fail certain events. When exploring, we can look at the various locations as little buttons found here. Our current side quest will be displayed alongside these. To investigate an area, we'd click on one of these buttons, and then the Investigate button. If there's anything else contextually, like shops, allies, etc. in an area, we can find them on the far left. When it comes to combat, you'll find your combat actions in the centre right where the location buttons once were. From here we can queue up to 8 actions in our combat sequence and then hit launch. I found using the attack boost and attack with weapon actions in sequence is the best use. So each attack has an accuracy and attack boost will raise that. When you find a sequence you like, you can hit save and load it so that you don't have to keep entering buttons in multiple rounds of combat with the same enemy. Now enemies have 3 stats. HP, damage and power. So HP is self-explanatory. Damage is the amount and type they'll do. They could either attack you physically doing stamina damage, mentally doing reason, or attack you uh, with both or the doom bar directly. The goal is to obviously smack them down before they smack you. Now certain enemies may have unique interactions too and spiritual enemies have a whole optional banishment system involving clapping and bowing in sequence that I'm not going to get into in this video. It's all quite simple once you experience it a few times, but expect your first couple of runs to go a bit astray. I know for a fact, my first run, I had zero clue what I was doing. When it comes together, it's a great little time burner. I remember fondly before the most recent update trying to unlock all the playable characters, and I spent ages diving into the game. Since the most recent update, there's obviously been a few more investigations come out, a couple of characters, and they've added a whole new tutorial section to the School Scissors uh, investigation. 
So it's very well done and put together, and it's perfect for fans of Eldritch Horror, Lovecraft, and Ito. It scores high with me uh, over and out of Smooth Brains. 